Welcome to the Extra Podcast. This is Jeff Buckham. Uh, this is one of uh, another in our series of Nobody Podcasts. Not because the people we're interviewing are nobodies, but they're very, very much somebody in Christ. But they're doing some really remarkable stuff around the area that you might not know about. It's amazing how nobodies do that kind of stuff. So today I am with Jamie Urima. Jamie is, can you say hi, Jamie? Hi, everyone. Jamie is uh, a... Uh, mother and a wife and actively involved in lots of different cool things around our community that I want you to know about. Uh, you have a family? I sure do. I just I said have, you're a mother uh, and a wife. I hope you do. Boy, that's a close one. Um, yeah, I have two kids, uh, Danny and Jeff. And Jeff is actually with your oldest this week at day camp. My he's oldest. Your good. oldest, yeah. Is he, He's in, in his little group. In his little Neptune group, oh, yeah. Oh, good. And I hope that's going well. Oh, yeah. They're having a great time. We're recording this in the middle of the summertime, and so we've got day camps happening here at the church. And so, uh, yeah, if there's any problems with your son, it's not my son's fault. He tells <laughs> me that all, it's, not, it's not his fault. No, maybe it is, but you uh, should call me. Yeah, I will. Give you some better insight to his life. Anyway, <laughs> Jamie, you are you from this area? I am not. I am a prairie girl. And actually... What, is it, what does that mean? I used to live in Winnipeg. And I used to live very close to Calgary, two of your favorite cities. Yeah. Actually, I prefer <laughs> Calgary to Winnipeg. I was in Calgary a little bit this last... I can see, I can see people living in Calgary, but I just don't understand how you could live in, there in the winter. Yeah. Be really cold. And I gener- I've been in Winnipeg both in the late autumn and in the uh, summer. And yeah, neither one are really a big draw for me. But uh, I've been stood in the corner of Portage in Maine. So did I guess you, that's Did like you a, enjoy the wind? No. It's the like a wind tunnel. About, well, the good thing about the wind is it keeps the mosquitoes away. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. We went to well, a, we went to a, a Gold Eyes game, the the baseball team there. Yeah, yeah. And they have the lights, you know, and around the lights are swarms of mosquitoes. And I thought, where have I come? Yeah, no, and there's no repellent really that can deal with that mi- kind of massive amount of mosquitoes. Did you grow up there? Um, I actually have uh, kind of grown up through the western provinces. Okay. So I've. I'm born in Alberta. I actually lived in Abbotsford about a block away from where I live now and went to Godson Elementary in grade four and five. And then I've lived, yeah, Saskatchewan, Manitoba. Why did you move around so much? Um, Boy, that's that's a question for my dad, I guess. Uh, um, You're following him (laughs) around. Did he have a job that moved him around? Um, Well, his family's actually a little bit nomadic, right? They still... He still lives half the year here and half the year in Manitoba. Really? So, and that's pretty much Which half all. does he live in Manitoba? I'll let you guess. Well, look, I, I'm not going to lie. I, <laughs> I would probably choose the summer. Yes, as does he. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I know. It's a tough call, though, right? No. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so no, he, uh, yeah, my dad's always um, liked to buy property, and okay. uh, so we came out here. Uh, he bought a townhouse when the market crashed in the late 70s, early 80s there. And then we lived here, and then the market went up, and then he sold it, and then we moved, and yeah. He's a prospector, as we call it. Yeah, so he likes to do that. And That's great. Switch it up a bit. He does construction, so you can kind of do that anywhere. So you got connected. I mean, you've been, lived in lots of different places. When did you come to Abbotsford back? When, when did you come back here? I came back here. Um, it was January in Winnipeg, and I had just been out here for Christmas visiting my parents, and I had seen that um, Abbotsford School District was hiring, Okay, and uh, that stuck in my mind in January in Winnipeg, and uh, so I thought, well, I'll apply, and uh, I got the call, we could definitely use you, we're short of home ec teachers, come on out, and so I put whatever I could fit in my little tempo and headed out. Wow. Yeah. And so how many years ago was that? That was in 96 or 97. That's fantastic. Yeah, so 20, I've been in the district 20 years. Teaching home ec? A uh, whole bunch of stuff, yeah. But okay. home ec is where I, I gravitate towards. Even and now. that's my training, yeah. yeah. Good. Did you grow up in a Christian home? Yes, yeah. Uh, I come from double Mennonite background. Um, the man you married doesn't have a Mennonite name. <laughs> 
No, he Yurima. does not. That is not a midnight name. No, so yeah. you, you had to go outside the uh, gene pool. Well, you know that sometimes that's sometimes recommended. Kids are health, healthy. <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna pay for that comment. <laughs> no, just kidding. Yeah, no, uh, that's a Ukrainian last name. Okay. Matthew is half Ukrainian and half British. Okay. Mm-hmm. Quite a combo. Yeah, Uke British. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So uh, you like you grew up in the church. You don't ever remember a time kind of not being not being Christian. Yep, I was uh, in church since the very beginning. I one of some of my favorite memories are um, always been uh, in my brethren churches. No alliance. Um, yeah, alliance, and it wasn't actually till I moved to Winnipeg, and then I went to Fort Garry, MB. Okay. Yeah, but usually alliance is where. When where did we you went. come to? When did you first start attending Northview? Uh, when I came out here, so in ninety six or ninety seven. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. How old were you? Or sorry, uh, we're not supposed ooh. to ask those questions, Jamie. You're, you, you're, young, young, you're a young woman now. I was a young 27-year-old. So did you get, you went to Roaring Twenties? No, I didn't actually. I, uh, I kind of missed that era. I had, uh, as familiar with Dave Curry, because I had gone to Youthquake he in was Briarcrest. The, he was and, the young adults pastor here at the time who yeah. ran Roaring Twenties, yeah. Yeah, but I was, I was really busy working. Okay. <laughs> And where did you meet your husband, Matt? Uh, Matt and I have known each other since we were in grade nine. Wow. But you didn't, were you dating him in grade nine? No, I wasn't dating anyone in grade nine. Okay. But uh, yeah, no, we are first, uh, uh, we are good friends. We all went to the same youth group and we went to a small church. So, um, and our first date was for our 16th birthday because oh, wow. we share a birthday. When did you get married? Uh, when we were 28. Oh, that, that's just, so there's a, that's a pretty good gap. Yeah, there's, did you, there did you was see a each gap other for there. 12 years? No. No, there's a gap. So. There's a gap. Okay. Yeah. Then you all both so. came to your senses. Well, that's what our parents thought. Yeah, they were kind of, what's going on here, yeah. right? But we we're, we we're always friends yeah. and uh, stayed in contact. We were in different provinces, and um, I went to Briarcrest, and he was in Brandon University, and... Then we're both in Winnipeg, and then he finished his degree and yeah. was back in, in the country. And in God's providence at 28 years old, yeah. you saw the light. Yeah. That's great. A yeah. kids, couple kids later, one yeah. named Jeff, which is always good. Yeah, yeah. Jamie, you're really involved in uh, in a lot of work locally here. You guys live in the area you live in our town deliberately. Yeah. Um, my first teaching job was at uh, Abbey Junior. Okay. which is now Abbey Middle, and we lived close there, and we always liked the area. Mm. And, um, yeah, so we've always kind of had a heart for, we like living in that area, and we also have a heart for um, being part of that community. So did was has there ever been a, a time where you thought, no, we need to move out? Because, I mean, it's not the same, from outside that community, so around the Godson area there, there, I think the word around Abbotsford is not the safest area. I think it's in some way some people would view it like Townline Hill, at least those folks. It's not really the case, though. I wouldn't say so. I think that um, we we really do live in a society where um, people gravitate to filling their, their life, their day um, with people who are most like them. Mm-hmm. And then when you step away from that or or into a place that's maybe not quite so familiar, maybe you can have a, maybe not feel so safe. Um, but I think that's more of a mindset than it is a reality. Right. But you were, you were, you're involved with a little bit with God's in school. You've obviously been teaching, you've taught there. Mm-hmm. Uh, how many years? Have you, is it just been there that you've been teaching or is it in other schools as well? Um, well, I'm actually not an elementary school teacher. I've always taught uh, high school or oh, middle sorry. school. Yeah. Okay. And, um, I I um, stopped teaching when I had uh, my kids and didn't go back to teaching for seven years. And during that time, was a little bit of a struggle for me because I definitely, you find out more how much you define yourself by the work you do. Mm. And so it was kind of, oh, like, I value the being the, the full-time mom and, and that, but at the same time, I did miss the teaching and using that part of my my brain and personality as well. And um, 
so when Danny went to kindergarten, then I got involved at Godson, um, just on the pack and helping, helping with different events in the school and being a parent volunteer. Um, but my teacher brain is always on. And I just saw some stuff. Um, I used to do presentations on creating positive school culture. Mm. And uh, even in Seattle, I was there once. Um, Where in and, Seattle were you? Well, I can't remember. It's all uh, the same. It's just all the same there. Yeah, but it was uh, <laughs> in a school that certainly had some challenges. Yeah, it's probably mine. Maybe. Maybe yeah. is that the trail you left behind? <laughs> <laughs> you surprised. Anyways, I saw some stuff there and I thought, yeah, like I could see where it could be beneficial to um, just have more opportunities where people could get involved that were um, lessen the anxiety that a lot of parents would have about coming into the school. And yeah. and uh, so there's a number of people that uh, got behind that idea. And uh, then we started a pilot project with the district. And I came back to teaching. That's great. Tell me, you're involved, particularly through, with Northview. You, you run a ministry that we are in partnership with uh, Abbey Free, Abbey Evie Free yeah. Church, called Village Kids. Yeah. What What is Village Kids? So um, Village Kids is the um, program for kids uh, kindergarten to grade five. And they come and they have an activity time in the gym, a couple snacks, uh, Bible time, a craft time. And um, they learn about Jesus. At, it's after school? It's after school. And how, how often? One day a week? Yeah, one day a week, every Thursday. And then while that's happening, um, running parallel to that is Village Kitchen. And that's the part that uh, I'm in charge of. And uh, it's a drop-in program. And uh, who, co- we, who comes to that? Uh, all sorts of people, actually, which is what I really like is we have different ages. We don't have a lot of uh, guys that come out, but we have some. And uh, we have, um, yeah, a really good mix of people. Um, what am I going to learn if I go to Village Kitchen? Um, well, you'd learn some practical stuff, probably. I, I don't know how great you are in the kitchen. Amazing. Amazing. Well, then, Katie, Listen, we would learn. I make the best top ramen around. I make we would ramen learn noodles. from you. I can do uh, the yeah, the the ramen noodles and uh, make make some mean uh, scrambled eggs and mac and cheese. There I can you do go. That as well, so I've probably learned an awful lot. What kinds of things do you do you teach? You're teaching people how to cook. So it's very casual. So sometimes when I talk about it, people people see me at a demonstration table with that big mirror above and being, and then we'll pour this into here mm-hmm. and mix thoroughly. That's not what it is. No, not at all, actually. So. I, um, we have a Facebook group and I throw it out there. So what do you guys think? Should we make this or that? Or other people will suggest stuff. And then I say, so this is what we're making this week. Uh, bring this container or that. And, um, then everybody arrives and we kind of stand around a little bit, have a cup of coffee, unless it's a more difficult recipe then it's right to work Mm. um but then people just come in and be like well we need these onions chopped and that needs to be peeled and can you measure out um, enough bowls to make uh, 10 recipes of bread can you do the yeast and sugar and that and so we kind of do assembly line type cooking um divide and conquer and then at the end of it then everybody goes home with something a casserole or some bread to bake or um, I mean, well, yeah. I do. Do a lot of the parents of the kids come to this, or is it people from all sorts of walks of life? And and how do they know about it? It is uh, word of mouth, pretty much. And people will say to their friend, "You should go to that because you totally need to learn how to cook." <laughs> um, <laughs> and uh, we have um, quite a few of the people would have kids in the village kids program. Um, but some people just hear about it and um, come even though they don't have kids um, for a whole variety of reasons. Um, yeah, it's very social and uh, it's a great way to meet people that aren't exactly like you and be comfortable right. because you are you have a task to do and so your hands are busy and you have a focus, but you're usually close proximity with somebody and so then people talk. 
regardless of who you are and and if you have social anxiety or not, people are people talk, right? There's always something to talk about, whether it's what you're doing or it's, yeah, food is, um, I think, a really great conversation starter because people have all kinds of personal and cultural memories that are very closely associated with food. And we love to share it as well. Like I, mm-hmm. I, my mom was a, a phenomenal cook and she loved to share her, her recipes with others and cook for them. And it was, uh, wasn't just to show off. It was more mm-hmm. to share. She, she just saw it as a hospitality and opportunity to bless other people. Yeah. To share a common pleasure, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But it is a great way to get to know people. And that's what it's ultimately what you're doing is try, is getting to know people and building common ground, even with people who are not, I mean, a lot, most of them are not Christians, I'm assuming. We have a mix. We have a real mix, which is, is great. And one thing that I've um, really been conscious about doing in, in the kitchen is not having, uh, these are the people coming to kitchen mm-hmm. and these are the people helping right? And so we, we come together on common ground in that we all eat. Most of us have families that eat. Um, we can all learn and we all have something that we can teach. And so it's a very um, homogenous in some ways group and a very diverse group in other ways. So, but we come together under a very common um, theme, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. So here's the really important question. What are your views on Brussels sprouts? <laughs> oh, Jeff, I love okay, Brussels so sprouts. so this is not... And so does it's Matthew. Not, it's not we, the right answer. No, I'm going to tell you about a dish we make, because I think you should know about it. It includes bacon. Does that sway you at all? Well, if the bacon is there b- b- alone, without the Brussels sprouts, then yes. Mm, no. You can even put a lot of other things with bacon, but if Brussels sprouts show up at any point, <laughs> you've lost me. Okay, Matthew didn't used to like Brussels sprouts, but he really loves a this convert. dish. Mm. A, con- yeah. a convert to Brussels sprouts. <laughs> no, Jamie, Do you have another I, question? I'm pretty, well, I've got serious questions now? regarding peas and broccoli <laughs> and that sort of thing. Do you have like a little card that when someone invites you for dinner, you say, thank you for the invitation. Here's my card. Do you and know then I, on it, it says, please avoid the following foods. And there's I, like small print, yeah. so it all fits yeah. on the card. When, my, <laughs> when, when I was in New Zealand, there actually wasn't a card, but there was this sort of understood thing. He likes chicken. So everybody's house I went to <laughs> was like some form of chicken. And at one point I said to my wife, why in the world is everybody always just giving me chicken? I like chicken. It's mm-hmm, good chicken. Mm-hmm. But there are other meats in the world. There are. Bacon. And finally somebody found out and they were like, we all we all only ever gave you chicken because we thought that's all you wanted to eat was, was chicken and some potatoes and stuff. No I'm broccoli. Like, I, don't, I don't even like <laughs> potatoes that much. So anyway, um, your involvement, though, in this in this ministry, in this area and stuff, it's in some ways uh, a really great example, I think, but part of the reason I want to talk to you about how you can how we can get involved just in the. The average use the things that we love to do in our communities just around us. And you've been very deliberate about that, I think. Have you find it hard at times to get, I mean, I could, most people who are listening are thinking, I would imagine, or like me, or like, you know, I don't know. <laughs> it's a little bit hard to be involved in the lives of, I have enough time with my family and all sorts of stuff. And I just, I don't, I I don't have a whole lot of time to give to something like that to get to know other people from other places and maybe see where those conversations might lead in God's providence. Um, I mean, I think anything, any ministry that you commit to, there's times where, you know, you, you're, you're grocery shopping again Mm -hmm. in Superstore and they've run out of this and you have to go another. I mean, there's times, right, where you feel like it's an effort, right? For sure. And I think that's part of any ministry. Um, but, uh, no, I really, I really love people. I love, uh, hearing people's stories, um, of knowing where they came from and how they got there and what they've been through. I'm very interested in that. Mm. Um, so I love meeting new people and, uh, yeah, um, it's, I think we're all made different, right? And so I'm that person who'll come in 
to um, a group of people and be like, oh, hi, I'm, I'm Jamie, I'm so-and-so, I'm Jeffrey's mom or Danny's mom, mm. and, you know, which one's yours kind of thing, right? Um, Would you consider yourself an extrovert in that yeah, way? Yeah, yeah. It's not hard for me. I know but, it's hard for a lot of other people. Right? But I imagine but, that your whole group isn't filled with extroverts. I mean, there are other people who are in this, in this cooking and who are not quite quite that way. And it, if somebody were in our town right now and were interested at least in taking a step toward getting to know people who are different than them instead of remaining in their enclave, they could come to your cooking class and it might be a little bit hard to begin with, but they would actually end up meeting some people who are different, who they might actually end up being friends with. And ultimately, who knows what the Lord would do with those relationships? Yeah, I think uh, I think overall, um, if we slow down a little bit, if we don't have such a busy schedule that we really like, we've got five minutes in between these things, we've got to get there, um, and we're present, which means we leave our phone in our pocket or in the car, and we are actually available to connect with people whether, you know, that's waiting to pick up your kids at school or that's at the grocery store or, you know, like there's, I think as a whole, we, even if you're not extroverted, you could, you can be present. And by being present, you will naturally connect with people that aren't currently in your circle. Yeah, that's a good, very good word. I, you're speaking to someone who's struggle. I struggle with that I'm a bit of an introvert and shy. Mm -hmm. And I've tried to in the places because my kids are involved in sports around the town. Yeah. You know, those are the places that the Lord has thrust me into. And uh, there is a temptation there just to be focused on the sport. Yeah. Um, but the sport is, a, is really a means to another end. And so it's only in the last year or so that I've kind of I knew you'd think that I'd come to that conclusion a lot <laughs> earlier. Right. Your pastor and stuff. But you come to the realization that, oh, actually, there are people here who are very different from me, who have different backgrounds, some similar, some, yeah. but, but we have such a wide range of people from, you know, people from Japan in our team. And, uh, we have, uh, you know, there are people on our team who, who are, uh, have varied marriage backgrounds yeah. and say some, some, uh, same sex couple, some like the, all sorts of stuff like that. And it occurred to me that God has put me into this very unique spot where if I were just to, like you said, put the phone down and yes. <laughs> spend a little bit of time just even sitting near them, yep. all of a sudden these conversations develop. It's been surprising to me is how many of them know I'm a pastor and, and of, they know of our church and right. they know of what, like even people who I would never have guessed. Right. They know who I am and they know what I do. And, and it's been interesting to hear the conversations start. That I I thought ah oh, wow it's going to be really hard to have conversations with these people about yeah. things that matter but actually no not at it's, all it's really not and I think um, it is that's the first step really is to be interested in knowing other people and being um, vulnerable enough to let other people know you which you do extremely well in front of thousands of yeah, people but not as easy. <laughs> Right. It's not easy easy when you're sitting in front of someone because I don't have to I don't have to hear you laugh at my. <laughs> at I think my, you do sometimes. So do. now that you've heard me laugh more, I, I think you'll pick me up. Yeah, well, I, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but no, I think it's more an attitude of um, of believing that um, um, other like that people are important mm -hmm. and that I think all of us uh, desire to be known. And to know other people, I think that's um, part of how um, we experience our our um, godly relationship as well. Yep. And um, so I think once you believe that um, people would be interested in knowing you and you're interested in knowing them, uh, a lot of great conversations happen. Yeah. And I think <clears throat> I think sometimes we can focus on the differences. Right, the cultural, the um, religious beliefs, the marital statuses, whatever, yeah. and I think we can sometimes just be too distracted by that mm -hmm. when it doesn't matter to God, right? Um, these things we're we're all children of God, and and uh, that shouldn't be a barrier, and to look for 
the connection points, right, as opposed to the differences. Yeah, that's great. So you're going to keep doing this for all many many years to come. Well, I hope to. I have a have a little bit of a blip in my regular schedule in that I have to have my hip replaced. I'm so sorry. that's kind of interferes with the whole standing and cooking yeah. and hauling groceries and stuff. But You know, I've heard it's really um, good good for that is Brussels sprouts. Yes, well, I've been really trying to do that. <laughs> Um, but yeah, so I'll have a little, it'll be a little different season. Um, but yes, I fully intend to come back and That's great. Uh, do that. Your husband's also an elder of our church. Yes. Just new, recently. Like a the new elder. The entire church closed their eyes and said, we might as well. I know, right? They didn't see what you saw. <laughs> I'm kidding. Matt is a great guy and you are a great woman and it's so great to talk to you thank you so much for coming in Jamie yeah thank you for having me if you see Jamie around church and you know it's Jamie you've now heard her (laughs) voice and her laugh she says I can pick it out maybe you can too you can pat her on the back and tell her that she's doing great work so thanks so much for being here thanks for having me absolutely talk to you later then okay bye bye